Well, let's get back to trying to find a function that's worth computing, even more worthwhile to compute than self-rejecting, that is not computable. What about this one? This sounds like a, a much more natural thing. We're going to define the language accepts as the set of pairs of strings where the first string is a description of a machine and the second string is an input string to that machine and it includes the strings that would be accepted. The string mx is in the set if the machine described by w would accept the string x. Accepts here just means we run the machine and it outputs a 1. It runs to completion, it, it gets to a halt, and what's on the tape at the end with our input determining function is a one. So is there a function that corresponds to this language? I'm trying to switch between languages and functions a bit. You should be comfortable with talking about either language or their functions. And mostly so far we've talked about functions, but how do we turn this language into a function? Yeah. Good. Yeah, so it's going to be a function that takes the two strings as input. And I should be clear, like when we're talking about two strings as input to a Turing machine, the Turing machine has one input. It's what's on the tape, but we can come up with some encoding. Remember, we can add symbols to this. So let's add a symbol, and we're going to encode the input as here's the string w, then there's the hash, and here's the string x. So the actual input is one string that's on the tape, but we can always find some encoding that allows us to think of that as two separate inputs. Our accepts machine is going to take those two strings as input, and it's going to, if it's going to output one, else it's going to output zero. I think more natural to think of things as functions than languages, but they're really the same thing. So is this function computable? Well, could we build a machine? Remember, we just said we can build a universal Turing machine that can simulate any machine. So a natural way to think about implementing accepts would be to do that. So we're going to take our universal machine. We're going to feed in w. We're going to feed in x. And we're going to take its output, and that's going to be the output. Is that going to work? That seems like we've just designed a Turing machine that can compute this function. OK, good. Yeah, so definitely this should remind us of self-rejecting. So if we could build it, and then we could build self-rejecting, something must be wrong, because we know we can't build self-rejecting. That's a good point. So what's wrong with, if we can construct it, then maybe we should be more worried about maybe our other proof was wrong, because this seems much simpler. But there's something that we're assuming that's not true. We've got to be careful what it means to compute this function. To compute it, we need, for any input, we need to get the correct output. Right? That means it always needs to finish, and it always needs to produce, for any input we give it, the correct output, which is defined by this. It does need to finish quickly, but it does need to finish. Does our universal machine finish? Well, so W is always finite. Our input's always finite, because we've got to write it down. The tape's infinite, but the model that we have, and there are sort of streaming models or things that you could adjust this, but the model we have is you write your input down, and then you start the machine. So there's no way we can have an infinitely long input, because we'd never finish writing the input down, and we'd never start the machine. So the input is always finite. These are both finite binary strings. What the universal Turing machine is doing is simulating M. So if M would not finish, the simulation won't finish either. So this doesn't compute accepts because for some inputs, this might never finish. It might run forever. We don't know what the output is. We're not going to get the correct output if the simulation doesn't finish. But we can't say, oh, it seems like it's running forever. We should stop it. And that means that the machine we're simulating would not accept that string. Because the only way to accept is if you finish an output one. So if we knew it was going to run forever, we would know to reject and we could stop it. But at least just simulating the Turing machine, what the universal machine is doing, doesn't tell us it's not going to eventually finish. 
You've seen that Busy Beaver, just the five state problem that I started last week is still running, but it will eventually finish. So this is not a correct proof. It's not computing accepts. Does that mean it's impossible? Is that enough to be convinced that we can't? Our definition of accepting is it accepts only if it halts and the output is one when it halts. So if we know the machine is never going to halt, we know the output should be zero, the output of accepts. But if we don't get an output from accepts, we haven't computed accepts. And this wouldn't work because this might run forever. This might run forever. And we never get our output. And if it runs forever, it's not computing the function it's supposed to compute. But this doesn't prove that it's impossible because there might be some other way. This is just our first simple idea for how to do it. Doesn't work. But if we're going to prove that accept is impossible, that's not good enough. We've got to show that there's no way to do it. So we're going to need something stronger than that. We're going to need something that says, if we could do this, our world falls apart. We get a contradiction. Everything is broken.